All right, so I'm going to try and uh, stick to some timely schedule here. The, uh, <clears throat> the first thing I want to just point out to everyone is that uh, AutoCAD is a, oh, we got a good cohort coming in here. AutoCAD is a vector graphics software. So uh, in, this, in this slide here, um, I can't, I don't know if, yeah, you can see my, so there's two kinds of graphics we're exposed to in the world on computers. One is called raster images. And so those are made of pixels. They're basically little squares. So like when you're watching TV or something like that, there's little pixels that are, are forming that image. Okay, so sometimes if you look at very close at a printed image, you can see the little jagged edges of the corners. Uh, there's also a kind of graphic called vector graphic. And that's actually a mathematically calculated uh, uh, entity uh, that's either a line or a curve uh, and this is my really bad uh, <laughs> two-second demonstration of 3d Cartesian space with a uh, two points in a line uh, connecting those points and so AutoCAD uh, falls into this category and that's what we're going to be learning so everything that we're doing is, is mathematical um, and you, you might see a little bit why that's important um, the other, the other uh, issue that we've looked at in studio is this idea of the datum, right? And how architects use the, these lines to coordinate an, an object. And so this is very deep, deeply built into the AutoCAD network software, what have you, in the 3D space. So you're basically, in this image, you, you have available to you three dimensions. So you have your, your uh, Y axis, your X axis, and your Z axis. But we're only going to be drafting in this xy plane. And so right now in this view, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, and everything is oriented uh, al along that view using those, those datum lines that we've looked at already in studio. And we talked a little bit about how uh, these, uh, this datum actually creates these kind of three-dimensional effects in space. But we're going to be mo looking more at AutoCAD. And we've also talked about how that is in influenced in your cube and how you use the datum to describe your cube is what we're going to be doing. Um, we'll also be covering line weights as we've started to do in studio and we'll look at how uh, line weights that you do by hand are going to be translating into uh, the computer uh, software. Um, <clears throat> the other concept uh, in this is called layers and so these are uh, process sketches that I showed from the Carpenter Center and what's important to understand is that when these were done by hand in the old days, uh, they, each of these sheets would be laid one on top of the other. And so here you can see in these sheets, these are actually trace paper. And you can kind of see uh, actually a little bit of an outline here of maybe an, uh, that's either a light line on that drawing or it could even be an impression from another uh, uh, drawing below it. So these used to be laid one on top of the other. That's why they're transparent. And so you could draw over, over those. Uh, and so we, our, our relationships would, would align. And so we've caught, we use that notion of layers now in, in AutoCAD as well. The other thing that's happening here is you see all these little columns, how they're one color, and you see the glass is another color. So th that also goes to this idea of line weight and layers. So all these columns today, uh, when we draft a building in AutoCAD, all these columns end up on one layer. Uh, the glass ends up on another layer. The floor patterns end up on another layer. So. Uh, this notion of layers is kind of built into our profession, which is kind of interesting. That is uh, my, my little uh, spiel for you, but now we'll just get into the nuts and bolts of the software. So um, if you could start AutoCAD, if you haven't already, um, and I want you to just go into a kind of blank uh, user, uh, a blank screen. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, if you guys could circulate around and help anyone who's having trouble just getting that first uh, part started. Is anyone, if you're having trouble to help these guys, raise your hand. Like shoot your hand up way up in the air so they know to like go right to you. Okay, great. Thanks. So I'm just going to walk around this like it's like you're driving your car and you, need, you have your dashboard and you need to know what you're looking at. So, um, uh, one, th one thing you might notice is uh, my cursor is really big. Your cursor may not be that big. We'll, we'll come to that. But first I want to talk about the, the different parts. So where my guy is flowing in here, this is called model space. Uh, this, is a, this is actually that 3D space. And when we start drawing, 
you'll see that this kind of infinite space. You can go infinitely in any direction in, in this black hole. Um, on the top here are called tabs. And this is similar to any, any Windows software uh, or Mac software where you have these basic commands that you pull down from. Uh, today we'll mostly be looking at the home tab and the uh, output tab. I still have a problem there. So what, just quickly, what are some of the qu issues that we're having? So I just, no, OK, this was a couple of people. Great. Um, below that are uh, panels. And so you see it says draw, modify, layers, annotation. Each of these has a particular function that uh, it, it helps you with. And then lastly, we have the command line down here. And that's where you can manually input uh, functions. Uh, and, t and type in commands. Um, so, uh, dun, 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 model space, cursor, navigation. So, um, f first thing to do is just practice navigating and, and zooming. So, if you just like, if you have a scroll wheel, you see how my little XY guy is zooming in and out? That's, I'm just spinning the wheel there. Or if I push my scroll wheel down, the little hand pops up and I can pan back and forth. So, if you get a chance, do, do that a little bit. Um, the, the cursor, uh, this is just a, a kind of technical thing, but if you go down to uh, customize and you go options, you can, you see here it says crosshair size. You could actually change the crosshair size. So I think some of you guys might have opened it and it might have looked like this. I, I recommend, so anytime you want to go to options, you go down this little wrench there. Uh, I recommend cranking that guy all the way to 100 because it helps you achieve perfect alignment. Um, so I went over the command tabs, uh, and then the command panels, and then the command line. So the command line is keystroke input. And this is your quickest way to use AutoCAD. It's a lot of fun to try and play with buttons up here. But really, uh, the, key, the command pad is where it's at. Um, another thing you can do uh, is uh, right click for commands. Um, so this is just another customization thing that I'll, I'll point you towards. Um, if you, go, if you do go in the options again, go to user preferences, uh, where it says right click uh, customization. Um, sorry. If you ha so you might have something that looks like that. If you hit right click customization, then you can say uh, repeat last command, repeat last command, enter, apply and close. Uh, that basically is just a, short, a quicker way to get through the commands as, as you're drafting. Um, so just to kind of play around a bit, why don't we just start uh, first with pictures. So why don't we just draw a line. Uh, so if you go up here to your top left, you'll see the line command. And you see this little guy pop out. Click on that. And if you click on that, you're, you see your cursor now has lost that little box. I click one point, and then I click another point. And now I've just made a line. Now, if I right click, I can, I can get the enter box that will come up. Or if I keep right clicking, I'll get through it. Or if I did that customization, I can right click and end my command, which is why I like to do the customization, because it's quicker. Um, if I want to repeat that command, I can just hit the space bar, and I can draw another line, which is pretty neat. And then if I hit space bar again, it'll end that command. So space bar also becomes a, uh, a, useful, a useful thing. So if you if you're doing this, just I would do this over again a few times just to get the hang of it. Uh, AutoCAD is a two-handed sport. Uh, always use your, your left hand as well as your right hand in, in drafting. Um, so then we'll go to rectangle, which is this guy up here. Uh, so I'm going to pick that box there and make a rectangle. And I'm making a beautiful drawing now. And, I'm gonna, and if, I, if I've done my right click, right click customization, I can right click and go right back to that command which is also a very quick uh, and efficient way of working. Or I can keep hitting my space bar every time I finish it. This, look, I mean, this looks like a great uh, learning space intervention project happening right before our eyes. Um, so there's another command called move. Um, so if I click on that guy, I can see how the little box highlights. I can click on that box. And um, it's, now it's dashed line, so it's getting ready to, to be moved. If I hit that ag command again or hit my space bar again, I can pick and move that guy. All right, I'm going to stop for a second and just see how are people doing? 
Is there, I see, is it, is it, is it one of these or is it one of, one of these? Two uh, guys back there, what, how, are we, how are we going? Get, I see a thumbs up, I see a, I don't know. Raise your hand if you're like, if you're, if, if you're like, if you've got a, a screen that almost even looks a little bit like this, raise your hand. All right, so we got a few, we got a few. All right. Um, really, if you don't have a screen like this, raise your hand. If you're like really just kind of lost, raise your hand. All right, that, you, you need to keep doing that during this tutorial. As soon as like you start spacing out and getting lost, just raise your hand. So these guys, I don't want to see these guys standing around. We gotta, we're, we're paying them good money. <laughs> um, I don't know if we are or not, but. Hey. So, um, so this is model space. Uh, we did the cursor. So navigating and zoom. So you can see now I can zoom in and out with these guys with my scroll wheel. Some people like to also use the touchpad, uh, which I tend to not to like to do, but you can actually zoom in and out like your iPhone uh, on the, on the, uh, on the uh, interface. So uh, some other commands, uh, there's copy. So if I pick that, I can copy this guy. And I'm going to right click and copy him. And um, then there's offset. Offset is a good command, which is this guy over here. So if I click that guy, I, uh, make a, I specify a distance, and then I pick my object, and, and it'll offset to one side. So I've got enough stuff here that I'm going to hit the escape key, and I'm going to zoom out and erase a bunch of this stuff and, and get myself a blank screen uh, for a minute. I wanted to come back to the, the offset command. Um, and what I want to move to also is to start using uh, keystrokes, or sorry, to start using keyboard uh, enters or keystrokes. So if I want to make a line uh, now, I type L. And you can see that a line starts to pop up there. If I hit the space bar, I go into that line command. So I'm going to click one point and then click another point and I'll hit spacebar again to end that command. Now what I want to do is I want to offset. Uh, on your picture menu, the offset is up here. And so I, I press offset, and I can specify a distance that I want to offset. And in this case, it's 0.092 or 0.0292. And then I offset to that side. I can also uh, type O in here and click, and then specify distance and offset that, that same distance there. I can also specify a distance of a specific number that I type in. So if I type O, offset, and then for distance I say 10, and I hit enter with my space bar, then I go and I offset a, a dimension of 10. And this, and this is just units. We haven't changed to architectural units. So this is just blank interval units. So now I'm going to zoom, I'm going to type Z, E, uh, not for zebra, but for zoom extents. Let's see, we'll try that again. I'm going to type Z for zoom, E for extents, and I'm going to zoom out, and my little piece that I offset, a, a number of 10, is up here now. So I've just expanded my screen to uh, 10 units. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a space to, to practice in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle. Uh, so if you go back to your, uh, your command line down here. Now, am I, am, do I need to slow down or, okay. So I'm going to, what's that? No, okay. I'm, I'm going to keep going and these guys are going to help, help you out and uh, we'll be, you'll be able to go back over this again and try and pick up on some of these things if you're missing them right now. So I'm going to type REC for rectangle and then I'm going to hit the space bar. And then I'm going to type in 0, 0, whoops, that's an O, 0, 0, 0, 0. Sorry, I'm going to do that again for you because I, I did something I didn't tell you. I'm going to type REC for rectangle. I'm going to hit space bar. Then I'm going to type 0. Then I'm going to type comma. I'm going to type 0. I'm going to type comma. I'm going to type 0. So those are my x, y, z coordinates for the rectangle. Now I press enter. 
Now you can see the rectangle is kind of floating around there because I haven't given it its last, its last location. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to put its final point at a location of 10 in the x dimension and 10 in the y dimension. And the way I do that is I type shift at. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and press at. And you can see that there's a, a little at sign that's popping up here. Okay. So now once I have that, I can type 10 comma, which kicks me over to the next one, 10, and then I can press enter, and now I have made a rectangle that is uh, 10 units by 10 units. I'm, go I'm, gonna just gonna, I'm just gonna go over that one more time. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna select that, just for those of you who are uh, able to do that, and then I'm, I'm gonna press my delete key to, to delete that. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to type R E C. Enter. Okay. So I've started my rectangle command. Now I'm going to type zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. And I'm going to enter. And I have that floating, a floating rectangle, right? Now I'm going to say shift, and the number two, which is the at key, key say at. I'm going to type 10, comma, 10, enter. And so now I've, I've made a rectangle there. And so now I can zoom, if I type now Z, space bar, E, space bar, I'm going to zoom extents on that rectangle. And so now if I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out on, on that rectangle. Okay. Um, what I can also do is I can start to offset that rectangle if I want to, say, move in another ha half a unit. So if I type O, and, I, and I, you see all these options come up, but I press space bar, that puts me on the offset command. Now if I type 0.5, I'm going to offset that rectangle 0.5 units. So this is now ready to pick that rectangle. Now I left click and offset it. it, it wants to do it automatically for me, but I haven't, I haven't clicked again to tell it which side to offset to. All right, so I float in here, it looks like it's going to offset on the inside. If I float out here, it looks like it's going to offset on the outside. So I'm going to offset to the inside. And I can keep doing that. It's still, my command is still live. So I'm going to pick here and offset in there. And I'm going to pick here again and offset in there. So I'm going to try, try that again. I'm going to do offset for O, or O for offset, and a distance of 0.5. I'm going to type in uh, 0.75 just to be a little different. And I'm going to pick that, offset on the inside, pick that, offset on the inside, pick that, offset on the inside, and then I can hit spacebar again, and, and I'm done with that command. And now, one thing I can do, uh, I can also select these objects. So my code cursor is kind of floating around here. Now if I click up here in the top left, and then drag down to the bottom right, you can see how I'm making a big blue crossing rectangle. That lets me select all those objects, and I can now delete all those. I just press the delete key to delete them. So I can show you that again. If I click here once, and I click down there, Without pressing any commands, I select all those objects. Because they have these blue dots on them, that means that they're selected, and I can now delete them. So once I select that, I can just press my delete key, and that will delete those guys. Um, the other way to select something, now if I do Control Z, I'll get those guys back. So if I now try to select them going like this, now you see how I'm not covering all of them, right? So if I try to select them now, I can't select them. They're not, they're, not, they're not highlighting. That's because I have to go all the way over them to select them when I go from top left to bottom right. And I just pressed escape to get out of that. So when I select them and I, and I messed up and I don't want to select them, I press escape and that gets me out of that. 
Now if I go from the bottom right to the top left, you see how they're highlighted and my crossing box is green? Now that means I can select these, but I don't have to go all the way over them. I can just go over one of them one at a time, and I can select all of them, and I can delete them. So if I go Control Z, we got a, a hand up over, over here. Um, I'm going to do that again. I get the green box, and, I, and you can see how the outsides of the green box are a little bit dashed. So I just highlight that guy. He gets a little bright and fuzzy. And then I press delete, and he gets deleted. And I can do that one by one if I want. And I'm, I'm in the delete command, so if I hit spacebar again, I'll keep deleting these guys. How are we doing? We're just kind of sitting back and watching, or are we sort of, are we, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, so what I also want to cover um, with those commands are uh, the notion of layers. So I'm going to go back to this uh, little uh, rectangle array that I made. So I'll type in rectangle again. And go 0, 0, 0 again. And then I'll say at 10, 10 again. And that'll give me my rectangle again. And I'll go offset. And I'll do a distance of 0.75. That's fine. I press my space bar. And I go in, in, and in. Whoops. I'm going to right click to get back to that command and go in. And then space bar to exit that command. Um, and now I'm going to go up to here where we have layers. And I'm going to make some new layers to put each of these different rectangles on. So under the layer command here, you can see that I have some options with, the, with what layers are available. To bring up the layer command uh, box, I press this button on the top left. I can also go to my command line, click on the command line, and type LA and get layers. And so now I have this interface for, for using layers. To make a new layer, there's a little uh, button here with a little star over it. And I hit that button. And if I hit it repeatedly, it'll give me a new layer every time I hit it. And you can see that every layer has its own name. And you can give the layers any name that you want. So I'm going to just go layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, and layer 4. And then you, the layers have properties. So um, they have uh, properties of either being on or off with the light bulb, frozen uh, with a little sunlight, sunbeam. Uh, they have a color. They have a line type associated with them. Um, you can assign them a line weight. And uh, they have other properties, such as whether or not they plot and other ones that I won't get into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, the first thing I usually do with layers is I give them a different color just to identify them. So what I just did there was under the color box, I clicked on white. For one of the layers, and I get this whole array of colors here. And the colors that I typically use are down here. Colors red, yellow, green, cyan, and numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to give color uh, 1 a red uh, color, or layer 1. I'm going to give layer 2 uh, a green color. I'm going to leave layer 3 white. And then I'm going to give layer 4 a um, uh, magenta color. <clears throat> and now I'm going to close my layer dialog box by clicking this, this box up here. And now if I go back to this layer menu uh, toggle here, I can see that I have uh, all these different layers now to, to choose from. So I'm going to put this guy on layer 1, like so. I'm going to put this guy on what I did there, I'm going to go, I'm going to back up, Control-Z. So I select that box. I come up to the, so you can see he's selected because he's got all these blue things going on. I go up to the box. I 
pulled down the one, and now he's uh, gone to that layer. Now, I haven't unselected him because it's still dashed and still has the blue lines on it. So to unselect him, I press the escape key, and he goes back to being solid. So now what I do is, uh, we got a hand up over here. Uh, I select the, my next guy to uh, pick out and assign my next layer. And I'm going to assign this to layer two, and I have that as green. And so now that's green, and it's got these dashed lines and the blue dots. So I, I still need to get away from that. So I press escape, and now I can go and select something else. And now I select this guy, and that is on a magenta layer. So now I, I press escape, and um, we, have, we have this kind of colorful box to look at. Uh, now if I go back to my layer menu, uh, I'm going to do it by typing, going, going down to the command line and typing LA. You can even just type LA. You don't have to go to the command line first. Um, what I want to do is I want to give uh, different line types to these layers. So, uh, you know, we talked today about dash lines uh, indicating overhead lines and maybe using dash dot lines for, for your construction lines. So I'm going to make layer two, uh, I'm going to call, I'm going to make that my dash line layer. So I'm going to click on under line type where it says continuous. I'm going to click that. Now I have, I have some options here already, but I don't want either of these lines. So I'm going to go to load, which is down here on that command, un, under those <coughs> buttons. And now I have a whole uh, menu of line types to choose from. I'm going to scroll down until I come to a, la a layer or a line type that says dashed. And I'm going to select dashed. And then I say OK. And now that's loaded. It's, so it's now in my, in my drawing, but it's not yet assigned to that layer. So I now have to select dashed again in this, in this menu of layers that are now, or line types that are in my drawing. I say OK. And now dashed is associated with uh, layer two, my green layer. So now I close that. And now you can see that's a dashed line. Pretty cool. Um, so I want to do, say, one more layer just to, uh, or one more line type just to get that right or practice that. So I type LA, enter to get the layers dialog box. I go uh, back to, say, I want to assign another line type to magenta. I load, um, and this time I want to assign a center line. I'll try that one. And I'll say OK. And now center line shows up in my, in my options of li line types that I can use in my drawing. So now that I click center, I say OK. And now center is, is associated with layer 4. And I close that. And now I have a whole different line type over there. How are people doing? All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, some other uh, interface uh, things to be aware of um, are uh, object snaps. So when you want to draw lines, uh, you can actually use information from uh, the objects themselves to figure out what line or where you want to draw from. So if I select this rectangle, you can see he's got uh, a, a blue dot here. I just clicked on that, but I, I, want, I don't want to do that. I'm going to press escape, escape until I get. So if, if you're ever in a command that is making you unhappy, you just press escape, 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 escape until uh, you get happy again. Um, so this guy uh, has an endpoint. <coughs> he has a midpoint. And he has other uh, things that I can use to make, uh, make a decision on where I want to draw a line. So I'm going to draw a line. L, and I, and I want to draw it from the midpoint of this guy. So this, this little triangle is popping up. You might not have that yet popping up on yours. So I'm going to press Escape. Um, and I'm going to go down here. And you see these little buttons down here? Uh, <coughs> one of these is called Object Snap. You can see the F3 there. So if I hit, if I hit that uh, Object Snap button where it says F3, Oh, that's going to turn that off, sorry. But if I right click on it, it's going to give me these options. 
The other, the other option to get to this menu, if you press escape, 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 get, get back to your happy place here. Uh, press F3, that's off, sorry. Um, type OS, there we go, sorry. So OS comes up and now you have all these options of, of objects you, or types of objects you can snap to. So you have an, a, a choice of endpoints, midpoints, center points, nodes. I'm going to uncheck all of these guys so we can just see uh, what each of them are doing. Okay. So right now, I don't have any of them checked. I'm going to try and draw a line. So I type L spacebar, and I'm not, nothing's happening, right? I mean, I can draw a line, but it's not associated with anything. So instead, if I type uh, O, S for object snap, and I type enter, um, I'm going to click endpoint, okay? Now, if I want to draw a new line, I type L spacebar, and I come to there, and now I'm, you can see the little box that's showing up every time I go to an endpoint of this, of this rectangle. And that's giving me an object I can snap to. And so I, I know now that my entities are all uh, coordinated. So I'm going to go back to object snap because I like that. <clears throat> I think it's really neat. Uh, and I want to now try and draw a line from my midpoint. So I'm going to draw L, or type L, uh, space bar, and you see the little triangle? That triangle means midpoint. And so I'm going to draw a line from my midpoint there to my midpoint there. Now to finish that command, you can see I still have this, this guy hanging out. I can either say escape, which is going to finish that command, or I can type L and I can uh, start over again. And I, I'm still out here, so I can hit um, um, my right click key if I had done the right click customization. Um, or I can do that and hit the space bar, and that will also end that command. Um, so I'm going to do another line from midpoint to midpoint. And then I'm going to move on to another object snap, which is uh, intersection uh, is another good one to, uh, to use where I can now uh, draw a line. Uh, say if I draw a line from this endpoint to this endpoint, and every time you see me kind of like smoothly finish up a line, I'm just hitting my space bar. Like that, that's my way of, of moving on uh, to something else. And if, I hit, and if I just hit my spacebar again, I start off that same command. Now when I go to intersection, and I'm going to zoom in a little, you can see that um, that little X is popping up where those two lines intersect. So those are, those are object snaps, uh, and those are handy to, to use. You'll also notice um, if I type line spacebar and I click and I draw, it, my, the <clears throat> the line naturally wants to go at a right angle, right? Um, but if I hit F10, um, now I, it's not snapping into that angle anymore. It's actually a kind of freeform line, and I can draw it wherever I want. Uh, and now again, I hit spacebar <clears throat> and end that command uh, really quickly. So uh, that's just another little feature to be aware of. I'm going to hit F10 again because I actually like having that uh, Polar, it's called polar snap, but it, it keeps everything going in, in right angles. Um, so I think that's a lot of what I wanted to sort of cover in the, in the first bit of just kind of freeforming uh, with, the, with the commands. Um, what I might do is uh, I might try and um, I might try and restart this with the uh, system defaults because I'm a little concerned that maybe some of the confusion is because the uh, customization, there might be some customized elements on my interface that may not be jiving with yours. So I'm just going to take a minute to uh, uh, restart the application. So what I'm going to do now is um, I thought I was going to be able to reset my system defaults, but it didn't give me that option right away. So I'm, I sent you guys out a drawing um, that we can use to um, do some practice printing. So you might want to uh, open that drawing up. 
um, and uh, <coughs> this is going a, a little off script, but what this is basically showing you is a, uh, does, it, does everyone have a copy of this file? Were you able to get this? No? Okay. Um, then what I might do instead is uh, just go back to a new drawing. Um, so I'm going to open a new drawing uh, with no template imperial. So there's a blank, a blank drawing. And uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to try and do was to uh, draw this um, object that we had, uh, I had sent, included in the tutorial package, which um, would then be able to use to do a, a practice layout. So uh, the object itself is just a simple uh, similar to your cubes, it's six inches by six inches uh, and has some folds to it. Um, and so this will give us a good way to deal with the issues of units and, and scale. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set this into architectural units, this drawing. So I type units and I hit my space bar and I have this uh, set of options here. I go to architectural and that changes the units uh, to architectural units. And I say OK and, and close that. Um, the other thing uh, that would be good with that, with that file was there were a set of layers um, on that. But we know how to make layers, so we can make um, those layers again. And on the, on the last page of the uh, tutorial, there are a set of layers um, that are provided. So um, if you scroll down, you can see here that uh, there are about 10 different layers uh, of which I don't think we want to make all of them right at this moment. So um, we'll start with, uh, we'll, we'll start with the, um, say, first three um, as, a, as a way to just make this little streamlined. So I'll, I'll type in two, three layers. Um, and I'll, I can't change that one. I'll change this to uh, death points, which is a no print layer. So that's a good layer to have uh, because uh, it will never print when, when you, once you've drawn on it. Um, and you can see here, once I, once I named it, that little printer went away. So it's like an invisible, invisible lines layer. I think the, the next layer is edge. And the next layer I have after that is edge dash light. And I'm going to go all the way up to grid for right now. And I'm going to make layer grid. OK. Um, I'm going to uh, change the colors of the layers. I'm going to uh, change def points to color 1111, which is up here. I'm going to change edge uh, using the uh, layer descriptions on the handout. Uh, I'm going to change edge to color green. Okay. I'm going to change edge light to color magenta. And I'm going to change grid to uh, dark gray layer 8. Um, I'm also going to uh, go and um, load my dash line and my center line. And I'm going to load my center line. And then OK. And that, I didn't assign those lines to a layer yet, so now I have to go back and assign. I want to assign center line to uh, the grid layer. Um, so that's enough for right now. And I have these layers now to work with. So what we're going to start with, um, and this is now um, on uh, page three, uh, is the, the drafting exercise where uh, we're drawing this box or, part or a view of it. And I'm going to focus right now on, on drawing the, the plan view of it. And, and that would be this view 
right here. Uh, and so if I zoom in, uh, you can see that it's three inches, three inches, three inches, three inches. So a useful uh, tool for, and this is related to the datum part of your cube exercises, a useful tool for this is called extension lines. And they're essentially construction lines. And so I'm going to type XL and I press enter. And now again, it's asking me for a point for that extension line. So now I'm going to type 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to press enter. And now I have an infinite line in space. If I zoom out, it's starting at my zero point here. So this is, this is going infinitely into my AutoCAD space. I want to make it in the X direction. So I clicked, uh, left clicked in that direction. Now it wants to keep making uh, these infinite extension lines for me. I don't want it to do that, so I want to press escape. But I actually do want to do one more. So I'm going to do that again for practice. I type XL and I XL enter, 0, 0, 0, enter. And again, it's going to try and make another line for me. So I'm going to go straight up and down. And that's going to be my Y axis. And it still wants to make some for me. And I press escape and I'm done. So I want these now, I made them on this layer 0. I don't want them to be on layer 0. I want to change their layer. So I'm going to pick them uh, using my crossing that I learned. So I, I click down here. So I've left clicked. I have the green box. I drag across. And now these are highlighted. And I can drag that down and move it to the grid layer. And that just changed the properties of those lines. So now I know that my little construction here is on a three inch module. So I'm going to offset those construction lines three inches. So I'm going to type O, space bar. And now you can see here uh, where it's highlighted, there's this little O1 inch. I want that to be three inches. So I'm going to type three and then enter. Now my little cursor goes away because he's asking me to pick a line. Which line do, do you want me to pick? Well, I'm, and every time I float over a line, it's like, do you want me to pick that? Is that the one you want? No. Or you want me to pick that one? Well, I want to pick this one. And so, but it, I haven't picked it yet because I haven't clicked. So I'm going to click on it. And that gets really scary for me because it's like, oh my god, now it's doing something. But it's not, it hasn't done anything yet. It, hasn't moved, it, it, it's le, it's, it doesn't know which side I want to offset on. So I'm going to offset above, right? And that's done. So now I just offset that guy. So I can keep doing this. And I'm just going to do one. Now I'm going to go in the other direction. And I'm still in the offset command. I never pressed escape or anything. And I'm going to go again in that direction. So those are the basic uh, pr parameters of my little object here. Now I, I still have this little square. I want to get rid of that square. So I press escape. I'm back to my, my cursor. Um, so I want now to. Uh, I, because I, this object is assumed to have a 3 16 inch thickness, I want to get that thickness in the drawing. So I'm going to offset this uh, construction line another 3 sixteenths, uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now the way that I do that is, I, again, I have my, it's now asking me for 3 inches. It, it thinks I want to offset 3 inches. I don't really want to offset 3 inches now. I want to offset 3 sixteenths. So I'm going to type 3 slash, so it's a forward slash, 1 6 for 3 16 and now I press enter and I highlight that guy again I haven't picked him yet he wants to be picked so I pick him and then I offset to one side and there you go now, now I have a line at 3 16 so these are just construction lines like we talked about in class day they're invisible lines they don't exist so now I need to draw the edges of, of the object um, and just to give you actually a, a, a slightly uh, better sense of, of what it is that is being drawn. Um, I will just sh show you exactly what we're, we're looking at right now. And it's, it's basically a very simple version of your cube. So this is the object. And we're drawing, right now I'm drawing this, this plan view of it. Right? So, um, I'm going to hide these guys really quick so we're not. So it's three inches in all size. You, you understand that. Uh, so I'm looking down at it. So my first 
idea is I'm going to just look down at it from above. I'm not going to cut it. So I want to make a little rectangle here because that's representing uh, this, little, this little face of it right there. So I'm going to type REC for rectangle, press spacebar, and now because I have my object snaps, I've set my object snaps, you can see it's giving me all these options for, for what to pick. And I want to pick uh, an intersection, so, um, or a midpoint it looks like, but the, the X is the, is the better one there, but I'll, pick the, I'll take the, the midpoint. And so now I've drawn the top of that edge. And I will select that, and I will put it on its appropriate layer. And then I'll press Escape to unselect it. I can also, if I want to, if I know I'm going to draw a lot of edges, I can um, just change my layer. So I just did that by going up to the Layer menu and, and toggling through the layers. So I'm going to change it to Edge, because the next shape I'm going to make is going to be this shape here. And that's going to, I'm going to make that here. Now I can make that as a rectangle again. Type REC space bar. Go to my intersect and my intersect there. And now I've made that plane. One thing you can do if you want to test and see how this is going is uh, on your layer dialog box, you actually have some options where you can actually turn off a layer to see what your drawing will look like without that layer on. So if I see how that says off, I'm going to click on that. It's a, it's a light bulb that's turned off. And I click on an object on that layer. And now I can see that that's, the op that's what I've drawn so far. Now, if I want to get that layer back on, I have some options. But a quick way to do it is to go to my menu here. You see how there's a light bulb that's off. I turn that back on, and my light bulb comes back. And then I press Escape, and that will get me out of that. So now I want to draw my light edge, which is down here. And I type L, space bar which gives me that guy. And now I'm still uh, alive in that command. So I type, I hit space bar again to end it. And now I want to start it again. And I type L, or I hit the space bar again, rather, and click that. And now I've drawn that cube or that little shape from above. Now I may want to say that I'm actually cutting that at this lower level here. So if I want to change the layer of this guy, what I can do is I want to make a, a layer called M cut, which stands for material cut. So I go to layer properties, I make a new layer uh, with my caps lock on. Whoops. I type M cut. I change the color of that layer to red because that's going to be my cut layer. And I'm going to leave it continuous because the cut information is continuous. And then I close that. I select that object and I change that to M cut, and now I have three different line types or line weights there to work with. Um, and if again, if I want to see what that's going to look like, I can turn that, that layer off. Um, so, whoops, not that. I'm going to turn grid back on again. Uh, so, the one command I want to then try and walk through um, after this part. Is, so we went through the extension line, the offset, the layer changing, the rectangle, and the line. I want to talk a little bit about printing. Um, and there's a couple things uh, to keep in mind with printing. So one way to approach this is to make an imaginary sheet of paper. So I'm going to go to layer def points because that's my my no print layer. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to type REC space bar. And then I'm, I have a rectangle that I want to make. And I'm in inches, so I can actually make an 11 by 17 inch sheet of paper. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to back up. So I'm going to press escape. I'm going to start this again. Uh, I'm going to type REC space bar. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to draw my next. The, the point of the, the rectangle at 11 inches up and 17 inches out. So I'm going to start by clicking a point in space, left point, or left click. And here the rectangle is floating out. And you can see as it moves, uh, you can see 
up here are the coordinates of it as it's tracking. And you know, if I wanted to, I could try to move it around until it's exactly in the right position, but that would take forever and be impossible. So I'm going to type shift at, which is telling the, the computer to draw it at a certain distance or a certain location, and then 17. Uh, so, and the at also refers to it's from the corner where I put my cursor. It's not an absolute 11 by 17. Um, and that might be worth explaining. So it, say if I, if I did rectangle, I'm just going to do this once because it might be instructive, and I click here, and I think I'm going to draw my 11 by 17. If I type, if I just type 17 comma 11, it's going, well, this is actually close to 11 by 17, but it's, it's going to draw it in, in the wrong, actually, no, it looks like it did it in the right. It, maybe this is, I haven't done this in this way in a long time. So um, I'm going to stick to the original game plan then that we're going to type rectangle, uh, space bar, click, uh, then at 17 comma 11. And it's going to give me an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. And that's basically a starting point to laying out my, my drawing. So I can move this imaginary sheet of paper. I don't know if I went over. So if I select this guy and I type M, I can move him. And now that it's, that is, it's live, I can click anywhere in space and I can move it around. And so I'm, I'm going to just keep moving it. Every time I select it and I hit the space bar, I can keep moving it again. And I can keep moving it incrementally. So um, then uh, once I have that layout established, and I, and I just kind of push this a little bit to the edge of this so there's enough white space for me to get uh, say my name and the drawing information under there and maybe some space above uh, if I need to put any symbols up there for cut marks or not. And I might actually position it a little, a little lower there so I can get more information down here than, than up there. And it also lets me get another shape next to it if I want to draw another shape next to it. Um, so the other thing I need to do, speaking of that, is, is to uh, write my name, et cetera, in here so, and to title the drawing. Um, so the function that we use to uh, make text a lot of times, and what I'll actually do is make a new layer for that uh, here called note. And I will uh, change the color of that uh, to a light gray. And um, I did it under the def points layer, which is why this is now showing up as a no print, which I don't want that. So I'll click on that, and that will make it print. Uh, so that, that's a important thing to catch. Um, so there's a command called mText, which basically makes a text box that you can uh, manipulate text inside of. So there's two ways to do text. I can simply type T for text, and uh, it will just place text somewhere for me that I can then, I can then write. Or I can type mText or MT, uh, and actually looks like I'm I'm also catching up to AutoCAD 2013, so it looks like it's doing the same thing, which is great. So it's foolproof now. Um, and so I'm going to type uh, plan 01 uh, for that. And now I'm in the wrong layer with this. I didn't change my layers. So I'm going to select that, uh, go to note. I'm also, and I, I pressed escape to unselect it. Uh, I'm also going to uh, change my active layer so I don't draw more things on on def points right now. And then what I want to do is I want to change. I, I'm not really psyched about this, uh, the, the uh, font of this guy. So I'm going to actually edit this guy. And the way I do that is I type ed spacebar. And now you see that it highlights. I can select it. And I can um, select the text itself. And now I can go to, uh, like any uh, text editor, select a variety of or just a variety of fonts to choose from. I tend to like this guy, so I will change it to that. Um, and then I will move it into its proper place. If I didn't like the size of it, I can also type ed again, highlight it, uh, like with any text editor, 
uh, and I can change uh, the sizing of it if I type in uh, another dimension here, such as uh, one quarter inch. If I really, whoops, that wasn't right. Escape. Do I want? I don't want to save those changes. So I'm going to try this again. Up here, um, I'm going to change the size one slash four. Enter. Okay, so that made that a quarter of an inch. And then I can move that uh, into place. If I wanted to be really um, uh, OCD about this, I could go to my object snap, and I could go to the node snap, and I could pick this guy and move him. You see how that little node there lights up? I'll move him out of the way so I make sure I get to where I want to go. And um, it, it can get it so it, you know, I'm going to need to also change my snap to pick up what's called perpendicular. So now if I pick this guy and I move, I typed. So what I did is I changed my object snap. I selected the object. I type M for move, space bar. And then I highlight there to click on the node. And then I move that over. So that it, see that little angle, that green angle pops up, and now it's perpendicular. And now my text is, you know, beautifully aligned under there. Um, that is getting us to setting up the sheet, but it doesn't get us to the actual exporting. Um, I can run through that very quickly, so that will be recorded, and then you can sort of uh, review that. So for exporting, it's under output. Um, and there's a couple commands. There's page setup manager, export, uh, preview. Um, and what I wanted to do was give you all a CTB file, which is a, a file that your, your computer uses to tell what line weights to assign to what layer. So I'm going to show you very quickly um, how to import that. Uh, and then I'll show you where it shows up. So the way to import it is to go to options. And you have plot and publish. And then I go to plot style table settings. And then I go to add or edit plot style tables. I know it's a few steps to take, but it should be fairly straightforward once you uh, go through it. That brings up this uh, a window, or if you're in Mac, it might bring up a, a different kind of window. But it, it should allow you to drag and drop an item from, um, if you have saved it to another location, you can drag and drop the CTB file into that location. So um, I dragged mine over here earlier. So it's, it's a CTB, NE 1110 tutorial CTB. So I drag that into there. Um, I already have one in there, but um, I'll just move and replace just to do that. Uh, I'm going to close this out, close this out, OK, OK. So that's an important step because now I can automatically update um, my, my layer setting, my, my CTV settings, and maybe I can make a recording that will go through uh, that, that process as well a little later. Um, but under Page Setup Manager, um, I want to uh, set up my page so that um, I'm going to modify my, my existing page setup so that the CTB that is selected for my file is always associated with my, my model space. So under here is where I can find that CTB file, right here, this little plot style table pen assignments. I say, yes, assign this to all layouts. And now I say, OK, and I close. And that's now associated with, with this file. So if I want to preview what this is going to look like, um, under export, I'm going to say uh, window, which means I'm going to pick a window that I want to export. And so I go here, I click there to there, just like with a rectangle. I'm going to display a preview. And that's a preview of what this drawing is going to look like. Um, and that has these, these grid lines turned on. And we can turn those off in a second. So I'm going to press Escape to get out of that. Um, and I can check that preview at any point in time by clicking on that, that preview button. I just, what I just did was I clicked here. When I want to actually export it, I go to Export. PDF, and I can then uh, save that out like any other PDF file. And it will automatically open it. And now you see this banner that pops up. 
So in the file that I sent you, uh, this border, I use offset command, <coughs> and I say 0.5, and I offset that border in a half inch. Um, and so that would act, you can use that then later to crop out um, <coughs> that that file. Um, I will very quickly just go into editing that CTV file so you can understand how how that's working. Under Page Setup Manager, um, under Modify, if I if I have that CTV file active, I can click on this little guy, and it shows me all the different colors that are in. Uh, my uh, my AutoCAD suite, and each of these colors is associated with black. But I could I could use, say use object color. But what I've done is with all those colors I've made them black except for these last few where they use object color. So you can actually print in the in these gray colors with with this CTV file. The other thing that every color has is it has a line weight. So if you want to change the line weights of your of your cut, for example. So right now my line weight is 0.7, which is very heavy for the cut line. But say I wanted to change that to uh, a 0.15, for instance. You will see how, uh, and I save and close that, and I say OK, and I close. If I go to preview, you'll see now that that was a heavy rectangle, and now it's, and now it's very light, because I changed the, the line weights. And that's just a very quick way to um, manage your, your line weights consistently across all drawings so you're not always having to uh, make the line weights in, in every particular drawing. Um, and that's essentially, I think, the, the basis of, of what I want to cover. Um, do you guys want me to uh, keep going through some examples of the, of the same stuff or... or um, Okay. Okay. So this is being recorded. So if you know, if you if you're finding it's helpful, I'm ha I'm going to keep going with this. But you can also uh, you know come back and, and check this out uh, at a later time. I'm going to just so we can keep the um, exporting consistent. I'm going to um, go back and fix that CTB file. Uh, so here's this guy. Here's my red. Uh, I'm going to bump that back up to 0 0.7. But just as a recap, that's four. Uh, that, so that color is 0 0.5, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to save and close that, and then say OK, close. Um, so to do another face, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of room with my extension line. So I'm going to use the copy command. So uh, what I do is I left click, right cross box to select that object, type CO, space bar. And then I drag this over. I'm going to input a certain dimension. I'm not going to just randomly uh, drag it over. I'm going to copy it over maybe three inches and see if that gets me where I want. Alternately, I could also do the offset again, right? So I can offset this. Uh, I can say three inches, just type three, pick this guy, and off you go. And I, maybe I'll do it again to get there. And look, I'm a little too close. I don't like that. So I'm going to move everything that I want. I'm going to Maybe I want to keep those relationships. I might move it again later. But I'm going to move all this stuff. You saw how I just right crossed all that stuff to move that. And then I go left cross to grab these guys because I don't really need to move these lines. And I'm going to move this ever so slightly. I'm just going to eyeball it a little uh, to get a little more centered. So I'm going to show, I'm going to draw the other, sorry, go back to this model. So we're looking at it like this. And what you guys have had are going to have to do with your cubes, right, is you're going to have to rotate and flip them. So this guy, I, I'm going to want to rotate and flip this guy uh, so it looks at that side there. Because I'm going to, I'm going to pull the lines off from, from this way to, to pick up the, this edge, this face here. So I'm going to make a ground plane uh, rotated off of here. Uh, I'm going to make a kind of long line. And one thing you can do with lines, which is interesting, is uh, well, there's a couple of things you can do. One thing I will show also is the trim command. So if I offset uh, this uh, extension line, I'm going to offset it maybe uh, one inch and see where that gets me. I'm going to offset this guy one inch. Now if I trim, so trim is uh, you type TR. 
space, you select this guy, <clears throat> and you select this guy. And what I want to do is I want to shorten the line that I just drew. It's too long. I don't want it going all the way to the edge of the, the boundary box like I showed. So now I click the out. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to try that again. TR, spacebar, this line, this line, uh, spacebar. Now, now I'm ready to trim these, these edges after I click the spacebar again. I'm going to do that one more time for you. So I have this line. And see, it's too long here. It's too long here. So I'm going to type TR <coughs> to trim that line. I want to trim it using this edge and this edge. So I just selected those edges. And now you can see uh, it, it, it's found uh, two objects for me to trim with. Now if I click uh, Enter again or press my space bar again, it's going to ask me to select the object to trim. So now this is the edge I want to trim, and that's the edge I want to trim. Now, I, now that's taken care of. And I press Escape to get out of that command. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making a ground plane. So the other thing with that ground plane is it's going to be a cut, right? It's going to be the same line weight and attributes as this entity over here. So I'm going to do something called match properties. So I type MA, and this is a great command. You use it all the time. Uh, and then I click this guy, and that little paintbrush shows up. And now I can make anything that I touch with that paintbrush match those properties. And so that's the ground plane. Uh, for my, my elevation that I'm going to show. Uh, so I know my th this, this, this face, I'm drawing this face now. And I can even um, make a little key like we showed earlier today, uh, a, a little rectangle. So I'm just going to make a little angle there, gonna mirror it, so we know that that's my elevation that I'm drawing. And I'm going to put that rectangle, I'm going to go back to my home page, uh, that's on note, so that's fine. So that's good. And I'll find a way to get all this in there later, but I'm just doing that to show you where I'm drawing. Uh, now, one function I can use to make a, uh, a, a continuous line all the way around here, I don't need to make a rectangle because this is already bounded off. So I'll pick this line. I typed, what I'm using is called a polyline, and that's a, and that's a uh, connected se segments of single lines. So I type PL for polyline. And I click there, I click there, click there, click there. And now that's all one line. It's not closed, but it's all one line that has all the same attributes. Now that's an edge, <coughs> and it's going to be matching, again, this edge here. So I type MA, which is going to be very quick and handy for me to just match that guy. And now th these are all uh, great to go. So I do have one more uh, edge i got to make, because I'm looking at it like this, right? I need to get this guy in here. So I know that it's 3 inches high and then 3 16 inches thick. So I'm going to do another offset, 3 slash 1, 6. And I'm going to pick this and then offset it to there. And I'm going to do another polyline because I don't want any line segment here. I don't want to do a rectangle. So I type PL, space bar, click here, there, there, <coughs> and there. And now when I'm done with my command, I right click and, and I end that. Now I match MA, pick this guy, pick that guy, right click again to end that command. And so, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a very um, sleek uh, uh, bedside table that I've just designed for you uh, and drawn here. So uh, I'm not happy with the positioning of these objects on the page. Um, but for right now, let's just see what that looks like. Uh, also, you know, one thing I haven't done yet this whole time, which is horrific, and I, I would um, shoot myself if I was my own student, is uh, I need to save uh, this file. So um, what are we, what are we, 1110 one, and tutorial 1A, we'll call it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the output on this, right? Um, so I go to my, my little preview guy here. What does this look like? Eh, that's, you know. I'm a little distracted by these lines. So what I'm, I, can, I have a couple options. I can turn these off. So I can go home. I can go to my uh, layers. Woo. I can go that, and I can, I can turn that guy off. And now you can kind of see a little better what it's going to look like. <clears throat> I'm going to control Z and come back out of that. Uh, another neat thing about layers while I'm looking up at this uh, 
menu up here is this little guy here. So before I, uh, I was making lines, all my lines in note, but say I want to move to another layer. If I pick this guy with the little circle and I click that, and then I click on here, or I click on whatever layer I want to change to, now uh, I'm drawing on that layer. Another little subtle thing uh, <coughs> that that makes me think of is, say I wanted to, I did that same thing, but I wanted to change back to this gray line layer. So, but say that gray line layer is, is buried under the pink line. So I, I pick that, but I really want to pick the gray line, right? So if I hit shift space bar, I don't move my mouse. If I hold over there, if I hit shift space bar, you see how that gray line highlighted? That's letting me toggle between those different lines so I can pick the right one. Just a small aside. So the other thing I can do to make these guys go away when I print, but I can still see them on the screen, is if I go to my layers dialog, and that's a, on the grid line, and I just turn off the printer. And it has a little slash mark there. So now I can see it on my screen, but when I go to output, uh, whoops, sorry. When I go to preview the output, the, li the lines don't show up. So I can see what that's going to look like. Um, but like I said, I want to get my little symbols in there. So I'm going to just uh, select everything on this side. And I like to try and keep things, when I move them around, within a, a fixed amount of intervals with each other. Like I don't like to randomly move things uh, between each other. So I'm going to move this at an increment of about a quarter of an inch and see <coughs> what that gets me. If that gets me enough room. And, and that's probably not enough. So I'm going to move it another, another quarter. That's probably almost getting me there because I'm going to need to move this guy over too. So I'm going to right cross uh, and then select M for move. I'm going to move that guy over half an inch to keep it all kind of even. It's getting a little tight, but we'll, we might scale that down. So I'm going to move this in, and he's kind of getting in there. Um, <coughs> and then I can uh, basically, I can, if I want, I can copy this guy down. Uh, if I want to format, I can even make extra uh, lines of text. So if I want to say um, uh, CAD, whoops, CAD tutorial um, plan and elevation. Um, and maybe I want to make that bold. I want to maybe make that a smaller font. Um, and, uh, and then that starts to be a formatted sheet. And then I might, if I want, I can also copy this guy over. Um, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy him. Sorry. And if I want to write justify that text for the other side of the sheet, I can go up to here, like with any text editor, and write justify it. <coughs> and now I can move select my node, snap it to there, and I could say <coughs> put my name. Oop. And uh, today's date. What is it, 2014? And I'm just about there, ready to wrap, wrap up my, my drawing. And then I might have some section keys that I want to put in here. Uh, maybe I want to scale this down. There's actually a command called scale, which I type SC. I click there uh, to give it a point to scale from, and I maybe scale it down by a quarter. Um, there's also a command called hatch. So if I wanted to hatch this guy, <coughs> I could say hatch. <coughs> and you see how that shows up? Um, if I go to solid, it hatches it solid. I probably don't want it pink, but I can, I can accept that. Because you don't have to always work so linearly. I can accept that. I can say, I'm going to make a new layer. That layer is going to be called hatch. In my pen table, I uh, use these, number, these layers as uh, actual colors. So that would, my hatch will be that color. Come back, select that guy, whoops, go home, and change it to layer hatch. And now that's a hatched entity. And I can hatch this guy. And this guy, and I can right click to s accept that match properties of whoop, 
in sometimes with the solid hatch, you kind of have to float around till you find the secret spot where it where it lets you match properties. Whoa, there we go. Match. Whoa, come on, come on. Zoom out. Oh, you're being tricky. I see. There, I selected it ahead of time. All right, so that that will do that, and then I'll again just check on my output. And I'm starting to get some definition to it. Um, so I think that might be a good place to, to stop. Uh, and I'll always save at the very end. Um, and we are, I guess, you know, available for comments or questioning. Um, and thank you guys for sticking around. Oh, thank you. Oh, gosh.